AEW All Out was absolutely wild. Just when they made the fans absolutely happy, they were like, I'ma give you a bit more. And look, that is not me roasting WWE. They're doing the exact same thing. I'm not even joking. Long term storytelling. Look at what Dabbing did to this kid. Remember Vince McMahon saying, I'm uh, not sure what your investment strategy is in terms of talent, but maybe we can give you more. Well... The man was not kidding. Alistair Black, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Adam Cole, is it me or AEW's roster is actually better now? No wait, I totally forgot about Goldberg. I'm obviously just joking around, I'm not trying to make it into some dumb AEW versus WWE stuff, but once I saw Adam Cole and Bryan Danielson, my first thought was... Are WWE really that stupid to let these kind of talents go? Oh, it actually makes a lot of sense. How so? They have uh, shorter legs. Oh yeah, that that's big point. Very strong point. Look people, if I manage to upload this video on September 6th, I deserve a like because I'm really tired. So if you want to make sure your Coca Jumbo grows to the moon up to two inches, make sure to click that like button. Your Coca Jumbo is gonna be all out. This might be the best wrestling pay-per-view of the year. I'm not ready to make that statement. In terms of a wrestling show for the wrestling fans, that's as close as you can actually get. I was not disappointed in most of the stuff, maybe everything. But even the problems that I have with some of the matches, I could not say that they were bad matches. So without wasting your time, let's actually talk about the pay-per-view. AEW All Out 2021. The first match was Miro versus Eddie Kingston for AEW TNT Championship. First of all, I absolutely love Miro's presence. I love the theme song. It sounds like a big warning. And this dude is built like a machine now. He obviously takes it seriously. You know, I was very concerned about Rusev or Miro in AEW because he had that gamer gimmick which is but might be the worst way to debut a superstar but this is a completely different person he's also a very good wrestler I, I'm not saying he was ever bad but he clearly improved and Eddie Kingston is also unbelievable so this was a very good match in my eyes we had a lot of action but it was realistic enough I'll get to that a little bit later they also made this match quite unpredictable we saw some near falls at times it looked like Eddie Kingston was about to win the match but that was not enough you know what's certain in wrestling Referees being idiots. The referee kinda costs Eddie Kingston the match. He starts paying attention to Miro. Kick to the nuts. The most destructive move in, in reality. In everything. Kick to the face. And a machka kick. And that's how Miro retained the TNT Championship. Is it me? Or almost everyone who held that championship had a custom version of it. And in my opinion, most of it actually looked really, really good. So I wouldn't mind if that's gonna be, you know, the gimmick of the championship. Every time someone wins the title, it's gonna be modified. So that was a great match. I absolutely loved it. You know, it was kind of a classic wrestling match. And even though Eddie Kingston lost the match, he didn't look weak at all. But in my eyes... I wouldn't say this match necessarily needed that, but they obviously didn't want to make Eddie Kingston look weak, so that was a great match, let's continue. Then we saw John Moxley versus Satoshi Kojima. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh. You can laugh, I probably pronounced that wrong. I'm actually sure I did. I love the vibe of this match, John Moxley is basically facing all these New Japan Pro Wrestling guys. I could be wrong, I think even the audience during the match actually clapped, which is, you know, most common in New Japan Pro Wrestling, so that was pretty interesting. And I absolutely love John Moxley's theme song. I mean, if you would tell me that this is gonna be Moxley's theme, obviously, it sounds unrealistic, it sounds stupid, it doesn't sound edgy enough but once you actually see it it makes sense i don't know how but it does so this was a nice match like i've said it had japan vibes all over it we even saw blood during this match which is always a plus in wrestling in my opinion and it took two paradigm shifts for john moxley to score the w so john moxley is happy with the result but that wasn't it like i've said 
AEW All Out 2021 was full of surprises and that was the first one. Minoru Suzuki comes out and it was quite a long entrance, you know, we heard the theme song for a very long time, you know, until he actually came out, uh, Moxley tried to look shocked, uh, for some reason it looked really goofy. For how long do I keep this face? So we see them standing in the ring and they start hitting each other, actually allowing each other to get hit. And they were trying to be tough boys, you know, trying not to sell each other's moves. Until Suzuki fought back and of course we saw the piler driver. So this is the match we're gonna see, I think at Rampage, which is gonna be pretty interesting and hopefully, you know, it's gonna be a no disqualification match. That would be the ideal scenario, we'll see. Then it was Britt Baker versus Chris. Statlander, obviously for the AEW Women's World Championship. So I don't really know a lot about the storyline, but I gotta say the match absolutely delivered. I mean, look at AEW's women's division in 2020 and look at it now. I'll get to that a bit later. And of course, Britt Baker retained the AEW Women's World Championship. Okay, maybe I have two little complaints. She's obviously the woman in AEW, obviously. We have a lot of talent, but you can clearly tell not many women in AEW develop their characters yet. And this is the one that you can tell she is the star. Another complaint is that championship could not even, you know, keep my pants on. I mean, that boy needs a bigger belt. I know why this championship exists. They're trying to keep it old school, traditional. I understand that, but oh boy, is it really bad looking. Then we saw AEW World Tag Team Championship match, Young Bucks vs. Lucha Brothers Steel Cage match. Uh, these always have great matches, always. So I knew this is gonna be entertaining, but this is the match that I have a problem with. So first of all, you probably saw the match, unbelievable, they're moving in ways human beings should not be moving, a lot of crazy ass moves, it's okay, I kinda always had a problem with the Young Bucks because sometimes the spots look way too scripted and they're wasting a lot of time, so it looks like they're trying to help their opponents to hit the move or it looks really really unrealistic. That's the problem. In this match, it was quick, so I didn't really have many complaints, but there's another problem. So we saw all this crazy ass stuff, you know, as extreme as you can get. Thumbtacks, jumping off steel cages, there was blood everywhere. This might be my favorite tag team match of the year. They forgot about selling. All this crazy stuff, but they keep forgetting the key. It's supposed to hurt. Act like it does for more than 20 seconds. I understand when The Undertaker gets up or The Fiend, it's a supernatural gimmick, I can deal with that. But in this match they act like nothing happened, I even dislike the finish in a way. We saw a big jump of the steel cage. Very high, very painful, after you land you should spend like at least 4 minutes on the ground probably not even moving. About two seconds later, he gets up and, you know, we see the finish. I hate that. I'm not a fan of that. First of all, you basically received a lot of damage during the match in the first place, and then you do this kind of spot and act like it doesn't hurt at all, as if you jumped on a trampoline. I get it. It looks cool. I just think it makes no sense and obviously you make you can make a point that wrestling doesn't make any sense in the first place but during, but during some of the matches, you know, the selling was one of the biggest points of the match. You can cl clearly tell they're trying to tell a story and this was a bunch of pe people jumping on a trampoline and like I've said, I love the match in terms of flying, entertainment I guess, amazing but it didn't make much sense. And the Lucha Brothers became tag team champions. So yeah, that was a great match, I loved it. It just makes no sense, I bet the next time someone jumps off the steel cage, the man is probably gonna sell it for like 10 minutes, barely moving. And this time, after like a 20-30 minute match, 
it meant nothing. Then it was time for the all-out casino battle royal. So I'm not really gonna get into this match. I recently started to watch AEW again, so I don't really know a lot of talent. I'm not the biggest fan of this match, it's basically poor man's Royal Rumble. It's still entertaining, but a bit confusing, overbooked, doesn't make as much sense, but whatever. It's still entertaining. AEW finally has a decent women's division, but like I've said, you know, not many women in AEW actually have, I wouldn't say a gimmick. Maybe personality. You're seeing a lot of wrestlers, but you're not seeing a lot of characters right here. Obviously, the winner earns AEW Women's World Title match, and the Joker was Ruby Riot from the WWE. Now she's called Ruby Soho, and she actually won the match. She's the challenger. I don't mind this decision, but AEW is known, at least what they're trying to say is that wins and losses matter and you gotta earn opportunities how they decide who's the joker how they decide who gets the best opportunity the best spot in the match is there an explanation but yes yeah, she wins the match she is the challenger great moment you know another surprise and you can tell she looks different she's one of these women in aw right now who has a character. Then we saw MJF versus Chris Jericho. Jericho loses, he leaves the ring. We see Chris Jericho's old school entrance. Turns out it's MJF. What a prick. So that was a great entrance. Let's talk about a bad entrance. Chris Jericho. Uh, okay. A Fozzie member was playing Judas on a guitar. Okay, that's fine. They expected the fans to sing. And I did see a lot of fans singing, but so out of tune. It was so bad. And the, the guitar was either too loud or, you know, the production value was bad. I'm not sure, but this entrance was not as cool as it probably looked cool on paper. Speaking of bad production value, during the Casino Battle Royal, once you see superstars making an entrance, sometimes they don't even show who's coming out, so that was another issue. And the match was awesome, you know, big match feel, I didn't mind it. Obviously, a lot is on the line, Chris Jericho's wrestling career. We even saw the big boys fighting, you know, it was a big match, a very important match in Chris Jericho's career. Uh, the finish was really, really interesting though we see the judas effect from mjf and he pins chris jericho even though jericho had his leg on the rope so mjf wins because of a stupid referee always you know that's that's wrestling and obviously i'm sure we all thought yeah this rivalry is gonna continue uh jericho loses but he doesn't have to retire because you know, he didn't actually lose. It was a bad referee call. So that's what we thought. But we saw another referee saying, you gotta restart this match because Jericho had his leg on the rope. So the match restarts, which was, in my opinion, at least unexpected. We saw the walls of Jericho or the Boston Crab and Jericho wins the match. We see the inner circle celebrating, singing, a great moment, I love this. I honestly don't think it was that big of a deal. At the end of the day, you know, the crowd popped. People were really happy once the match was restarted and wrestling is all about moments, so they made this match a bit more interesting. We see Darby Allen with his signature entrance and then we see CM Punk with pants. Not gonna lie, I was a bit disappointed, yes, I know, I was disappointed to see a 40 year old man with pants. I wanted to see a 40 year old man in his underwear, that's what I wanted to see, yes. <laughs> I mean, I kinda got used to it during the match, but that was... An unnecessary change. And you know, obviously I was concerned, maybe CM Punk doesn't have it anymore. Turns out, he does. He really, really does. At first, you know, we saw a lot of holds. 
You know, and I thought maybe CM Punk is all gassed out. But that wasn't the case. He kept up with Darby Allen, a very young superstar. We saw these crazy sequences, crazy reversals, you know, GTS reversals and... It was a great match. I didn't even need it to be a good match. All I wanted to see is CM Punk wrestling. You know, it didn't even need to be a good match. But it was. One of the biggest highlights for me were the GTS cells. I mean, Darby did a really good job. This man is basically fearless. I also love the spot where Darby was going for his finisher, the coffin or whatever and CM Punk pulled the Undertaker and the finish was pretty cool as well. Darby jumps on CM Punk's neck but CM Punk reverses it into go to sleep. Uh, amazing sell and that's how CM Punk took the W. So CM Punk wins, he talks to the camera, you know, says seven years, I'm back and he's happy about the match. The look on CM Punk's face was the exact opposite of, you know, the Undertaker's face at Saudi. Then we see Sting, they shook hands and it was a pretty emotional moment, loved it. Uh, once you see these kind of moments, you always think someone is gonna turn heel, you know. But they pick up Darby Allen, who, you know, actually tries to get up by himself, they shook hands, emotional, lovely moment, CM Punk is back, and the man is just as good as he was before, so maybe people will say CM Punk didn't need that victory, let's be honest right here, the man made his return after 7 years, of course he does, of course he does, and Darby is still young, I mean, he's probably even gonna beat CM Punk, so it's not that big of an issue, and uh, I love how lately everyone who kinda comes back to wrestling, uh, Edge, Christian, they're just as good or even better than they were before. It's quite fascinating. Then we saw Paul White vs QT Marshall and I love Paul White's theme song. I love the fact that he kept well, ding dong, ding dong, well, dong, yeah. And this was, okay let's be fair, it was a slow match. I didn't care about the match. Uh, the only highlight, of course, for me was seeing the Big Show wrestle. That was it. The match was not good, uh, by any means, but he wins the match. One thing I've noticed, one of the dudes didn't sell the KO punch. Big Show did the KO punch, and he just stood. Maybe that was a mistake, probably. But yeah, the Big Show is back. Uh, wasn't bad, wasn't good. We just saw the return of the Big Show. That's it. And then it was time for the main event, AEW World Championship match, Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage. Very good match, you know. Before this match, Christian Cage was actually undefeated. I'm not sure why it wasn't a no disqualification match, because that's what we basically saw. Obviously, the referee was distracted, but if you're gonna do these spots, why won't you make it into a no disqualification match in the first place? But all in all, it was a very entertaining match. And like I said, Christian Cage is probably even better than he was before. It's crazy. Of course, we saw the Good Brothers. They tried to distract Christi Christian Cage. It back fight we saw a kill switch but you know Kenny Omega kicked out then uh, Callus tries to interfere and obviously Kenny Omega got some time to recover so instead of kill switch we saw the winged angel of the top rope and that's how the match ended very good finish the crowd popped uh, before he did the move everyone stood on their feet great stuff and uh, that's when we started to get our hopes up. Who's coming out? Is it Bray Wyatt? Is it Adam Cole? Is it Daniel Bryan? You know, I wasn't too sure. I didn't, you know, get my hopes up too much because it was already a good match. I didn't care. Oh, okay, I did. I did. But I'm saying this paper was already good. It didn't need that. So Ken Omega is talking about how no one is gonna take that championship away from him, you know, because even if someone could, uh, they're retired or dead. The lights go out, The Undertaker. He said, dead. It's The Undertaker. No, it's actually Adam Cole. Adam Cole is all elite. What a moment. Big pop. I was really happy. Obviously, that's supposed to be the big moment of the show. Adam Cole, someone that was actually the face of the competition in 2020, 
NXT had Adam Cole, AEW had uh, Kenny Omega or whatever, whoever it was. But basically, that was the competition. So it's crazy to see that man in AEW. It looked so odd. We thought he's gonna challenge Kenny Omega, but he super kicks, I think, Lucha Zorus or Jungle Boy. So he's in the elite. They're being cocky, and Kenny Omega says, I gotta send people home happy he does the catchphrase and we hear daniel o'brien's theme song okay thank you in the same night during the same segment two of the biggest free agents awesome stuff man i i just gotta say i'm so glad i started watching aw again that's the type of wrestling i really really missed it just feels a lot more real not overproduced not too many LED lights it may sound silly but i really can't stand that shit so daniel bryan is all elite he has a similar theme song it's kind of a remix uh not sure how i feel about it but We'll, we'll see, you know, I, I can't judge yet. We see the brawl between two teams, and of course the babyface team stands tall. Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Daniel Bryan, and Christian Cage. What a moment. Daniel Bryan is in AEW. How many days it passed since CM Punk made his debut? 20 maybe? And we already see Adam Cole, Daniel Bryan... It's crazy. It's crazy and like I've said, my first thought was, are WWE really that stupid? It's like, okay, maybe they think they're gonna build new stars. They're not really successful at that. So it might, it might not even work. But these three talent are absolute game changers and now AEW has to figure out how to use everyone with this kind of a stacked roster the roster is almost perfect right now when it comes to the main event it's perfect so now they gotta figure out how to make everyone happy because not everyone is gonna be a world champion is it fair to say that all out is basically AEW's wrestlemania like i'm not even sure i don't know that but let me know in the comments below is that already established or right now it is <laughs> so yeah people all Out was almost a perfect wrestling pay-per-view. I've missed this, you know, during the pandemic I stopped watching, I didn't care about AEW anymore. But right now it's just impossible to ignore. So thank you for watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The Great One, peace, love and hugs, it's been a pleasure.